Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're testing the 18 sound ND1TP compression driver along with the 18 sound XT120 horn. And so let's get into it. So what caught my eye with this product was the published data. You can see here the flat frequency response, the uh, excellent impedance curve for this compression driver with um, minimal break up into the upper treble. Also with the XT120 horn, the published data is shown here with excellent uh, off-axis performance. So in this video, I'm going to look at my own test results and see if it lives up to the published data. I also wanted to look at using this horn driver combo in an upcoming DIY plan set that uses the Purify 8 inch woofer. And so that's uh, project number 1736. And so I was looking for a high frequency solution that offered extremely low distortion uh, to match the Purify 8 inch woofer. And so let's see if this is a candidate for that specific project. So for the test, um, I decided to rig up a test baffle that represents the baffle size for the 1736 project. And so just for reference, it's shown here. Uh, it's 30 centimeters wide. And so I also added styrofoam walls and, and also to the top there just to closely mimic what we're trying to do with the 1736 project. And so I started with an impedance sweep of the horn driver combo. You can see here we have the fundamental resonance at around 850 hertz. And then we have some peaks in the, the impedance sweep at one kilohertz and at 1.5 kilohertz. We see a bump at four and a half kilohertz and then we start to see some mild breakup at around 16 kilohertz. And so I measured the frequency response at one meter and you can see it here. So this doesn't match the published data at all. So we see a broad Q hump uh, centered around 3.5 kilohertz. And also there's um, a, a peak here near the cutoff of the horn. And so just going back to show you uh, the published data, you can see here that it doesn't look in any way similar. There's a, there is a hump there at well, uh, the 3.5, but it, it's barely noticeable. Um, so not sure um, why my results are drastically different from published, but um, it, that does happen from time to time. And that's what this test is for. So looking at the polar map, I measured off axis up to 90 degrees and I was able to uh, get the resulting polar map. And so you see that the coverage uh, quickly narrows at three kilohertz to an to a 40 degree listening window. So that's disappointing to see uh, by five kilohertz. It's wide back out to the coverage of 90 degrees, which is what's published for this XT120 horn. So um, if we compare that against what they've published. Um, so I think what they've done is they've applied some smoothing uh, to embellish the results there. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of when you're looking at published data. Um, they've obviously applied some what appears to be maybe one to one octave smoothing on that. So, so showing the same result, but with a waterfall plot, it even further highlights the discontinuities that we're seeing in the off axis. Now I just for comparison's sake mounted the uh, second driver to horn number uh, 1869, which I'll post a link to the test results from that. But basically you can see the off axis results uh, from this horn and also again with the waterfall. And I decided to measure the response with the, X, with the ND1TP compression driver on the 1869 horn. And so you can see here, we do see improvements in the frequency response with the with this ES circular horn um, and then overlaying the result between the red showing as the XT120 horn against the uh, horn 1869 in green. So the 
ES horn does flatten the response, but we still see this minus 6 dB shelf uh, starting at 5 kilohertz. So that's something that's inherent in the driver. Now, to continue on with the testing, I decided to introduce a, a notch filter centered around 3.5 kilohertz just to flatten that hump so that I can continue with my time domain tests. And so you can see here with Burst Decay, the driver is relatively well behaved in the time domain as well as with the uh, cumulative spectral decay. Now distortion, I measured harmonic both at 85 and 95, and you can see that the performance is relatively good on this driver. Now switching to intermodulation, you can see here that we do see rising IMD as you move into the upper treble. And then with a 95 dB test signal, we can see here that in the upper treble, we're only at minus 50 dB uh, for distortion and in regards to intermodulation and so um, we're shy of our performance target by a good 15 dB when it comes to distortion so I've uh, unfortunately because of the directivity issues with the horn uh, and then the poor distortion performance at least in the context of home hi-fi um, I'm ruling out this driver um, it's shy by about 15 dB of reaching our our target uh, for sound quality and so I had actually drawn in the horn and I was ready to start making this cabinet in our workshop but um, based on these test results I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board on this project uh, and find a high frequency solution that's suitable for the 8 inch purify so I'm continuing testing and I do get quite regular emails on this project 1736 since publishing my blog uh, I did a design study on this and so I'm I continue to look at AMT tweeters uh, dome tweeters um, other solutions something that's gonna uh, really excel and be readily uh, constructed by you know the average DIY enthusiast as far as woodworking capabilities so um, you can see here that the 1736 project is just using a regular 3 inch um, port, uh, regular beef base reflex port there just to simplify it there. So um, something else that I'll mention too is directly after measuring this driver and horn combo I also did a test on a $13 dome tweeter and a 3D printed circular ES horn and so just to highlight um, maybe the complete difference in performance, let me just uh, go to that blog page for you a second here. I should have had that ready. Uh, let me just see if I have it. So the the uh, test data on this peerless uh, 25 millimeter dome tweeter, I, I tested it directly after this and you can see it here I had a 3d printed horn made and so you can see it there it's a 15 centimeter diameter horn and I just wanted to show you the actual test results from this and so you can see here how linear the response is and after applying the high pass filter you can see here the the results it's perfectly flat through its pass band from about 1.5k. It's got about a 4 dB uh, peak there at around 13 kilohertz. But even the off-axis you can see here, uh, off-axis results we're getting with this dome tweeter. Not only that, the distortion, um, if I scroll down here, intermodulation distortion on this $13 tweeter, minus 73 dB uh, in the 2k region and then minus uh, 70 dB here in the upper treble. So that's at an 85 dB test signal. So this is exceeding our target for sound quality by a wide margin. Um, so it just kind of goes to highlight a few points. One, cost isn't everything. And there's some real gems out there, even within a specific brand. You know, I, I find that there's specific models of tweeters, compression drivers that just really stand out. And then even within a certain brand, there's duds. There's ones that um, that kind of got through the cracks on, on overall quality. And so 
just it's interesting how um you know within a certain brand you can really find some gems and this is the case with this cheap little $13 dome tweeter uh, provides excellent sound quality, both uh, objectively and subjectively. The tweeter sounds dynamic, has incredible uh, low-level detail retrieval and sound stage depth. And so I've decided to um, uh, introduce a little ultra-compact desktop monitor, which I'll feature in a future video. So stay tuned on that. But in regards to the 18 sound project, um, it fell short. Uh, of my target for home use. So that's it for today. Take care. Have a great day.